What's up everybody and welcome back to the Sam's Report. We've got a special Surface Edition for you, if you will. Uh, Microsoft has announced the Surface Go and I got to play with it. And so why uh, why look at my face when you can look at the, uh, the Surface Go here? I'm just going to let this video run kind of on a loop as we talk about the new hardware. Microsoft uh, let me play with this thing about two weeks ago. And this is the spiritual successor to the Surface 3. They're calling it the Surface Go. And it will ship with uh, Windows 10 Home in S mode for consumers. And if you're on the commercial side of life, you'll have Windows 10 Pro configuration options uh, as well. Now, let's talk about dimensions here. We got 9.6 inches by 6.9 inches by 0.33 inches. Or if you're on the other side of the pond, 245 millimeters by 175 by 8.3. And it features everything you know and love about a Surface. Just think of a Surface Pro but smaller. It's compact, it's better, it's just a little bit smaller. Then I should say it's a little bit better than the Surface 3. So let's dive right in here. The hinge on the back, uh, it, it uses the same parts as the Surface Pro, so you've got unlimited stops, not like the Surface Pro 3 that had a couple pivot points. It's gonna come in a bunch of colors, such as platinum, you can see here, um, well, the, the color is platinum, but it's going to come with a bunch of different options for the type covers, including that burgundy, you've got cobalt, you've got all those good colors. But the screen size is 10 inches, and it's a pixel sense display with an 1800 by 1200 resolution. That is 217 uh, PPI with an aspect ratio of 3.3 by 2, and that is a 10 point multi touch display. Now, the processor here is a little interesting. It is an Intel Pentium Gold processor. 4415Y. Now that benchmark or that processor sits below the Core i series. So it's going to be it's going to be not as good performance wise um, when it comes to that, but I don't think it's going to be terrible. And we'll talk about more about that here in a minute. On the graphics side, we have HD graphics 615, and on the memory side, we have 4 gigabytes of RAM or there is another option for 8 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, it's got 64 gigabytes of eMMC uh, solid state storage or, uh, or sorry, 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage at the 64 gigabyte level. When you jump up to the 128 or 256, it is solid state storage. And of course it features enterprise security, TPM 2.0, uh, all the network you would want with, uh, 802.11 ABGN and AC Bluetooth wireless 4.1. And there will be LTE options. Now, Microsoft is saying this thing has up to nine hours of battery life that is likely using their video test. So I would expect this thing to come in around probably six to seven under normal usage. But, uh, until I get a full, you know, time with the review unit, we'll, we'll just kind of hold on to that for a little bit. Uh, it does have windows hello so it's got that biometric login in the front facing camera is five megapixels and the rear is eight megapixels fortunately it does have usb type c it also has surface connect but you can charge over type c and micro sdxc card reader and of course that very lovely headphone jack <clears throat> now that being said this thing is the spiritual successor to the surface three uh, microsoft didn't call it the surface four but if you've been waiting and holding out for one it is absolutely the Surface 4. It's very similar, although the only interesting thing about this is, compared to the Surface 3, it actually has a lower resolution display. I'm not too caught up in that, although the processor is significantly better. I did have some time uh, on it when I was in New York City, which is how I got all these pictures and this video uh, with the hands-on with the device, and it did feel okay. I, I don't have a conclusive performance review because we only had about an hour with it, but I can tell you one thing, the new and improved type cover that comes with it, which we'll see here in a second on the video, uh, the trackpad is about the size of a swimming pool. It is greatly improved and it features the updated keys from the Surface Pro line. And so it also has the pen input and everything else that you would imagine. It's honestly just a smaller surface and it looks and feels pretty good. It is gonna cost $399 is the starting price. It'll become available August 2nd and um, yeah so there's a lot going on here because it's we skipped a couple generations with the Surface 3 the reason why I don't think they're calling it the Surface 4 is mostly because we're kind of like on the Surface Pro 5 but Microsoft isn't really calling it Surface Pro 5 and they would have this odd numbering issue then they have the Surface Book 2 so I think they came up with Surface Go obviously they can't use Surface Mini because they were going to use that for a previous product and they never did and so the Surface Go, I, th I actually think it's an okay name. I, I'm not too upset about it. I think it's a good 
kind of, well, it's on the go. Microsoft was uh, really touting about how small and thin this thing is. And one of the interesting facts is I asked them why the headphone jack is actually up a little bit high on the right side because on the other Surface products, that means that the uh, if you plug in your headphones, it, the cord dangles across the keyboard. It's really annoying. But they told me the reason that is, is that they can't put it down any lower because it's too thin because the kickstand takes up some room and there's just not physically enough space. So their choices are either put it up high or drop it all together. And I think we can all agree we would much rather have it than not. And so um, at the beginning of the, of the show here, you, you saw me hold this one up. You could easily mistake this is the Surface 3. This is not the Surface Go. And I want, one reason I want to show you, because a lot of people don't, don't remember this device, but it only had this multi-stage kickstand. The Surface Go is, it, it has unlimited degrees, I believe they call it. And so the audio on it is okay. Um, we saw them, actually we saw them, we saw, we actually got to play with it too, uh, running office apps. And again, performance seemed okay. It, this is not going to be your your daily driver by any means. If you need something that's like that, I would recommend the Surface Pro, but this is gonna be great for the education segment, although I think the price might be a little high because that 399 does not include the type cover. Uh, I think it's gonna be great for first line workers as Microsoft calls them who just need a tablet out in the field to punch in things into the, uh, into the software, or whatever the database or whatever you wanna call it. I think that's gonna be great for those people. I think it's gonna do well in education. I think Microsoft did a good job of filling the lower end market of the Surface lineup because this is now the entry level product. The previous entry level price was about $799. So it, it is a little expensive. I really wish it was $349, I think would be a really sweet spot for it. In $299 would obviously be amazing because $399, you get into some of the higher level iPads at that point. And so, it, and you're not getting a ton because remember, you're getting the 64 gigabyte eMMC storage at that option, which is going to be a little bit slower than I believe the standard solid state drive. Again, hold all like review opinions until I've had time to actually get one into my own hands in my own house where I can run my own reviews. But this is just based on an hour of time with it at Microsoft. And of course, I'm, I left off that there's ambient light sensors, accelerometer, gyroscope. Uh, it, I think it's going to be a good entry level device for the Surface brand. It keeps that kind of premium essence of the Surface line. The external feels really solid. It doesn't feel like a cheap plastic thing. Um, the specs, while lower end, they didn't go bottom of the barrel at this point. They could have lowered the resolution and all that good stuff. Um, oh, the other thing that is coming, there's also another Surface mouse, which is really just, uh, well, I don't have one with me right now. It looks exactly like the stuff that's shipped with the designer keyboards that Microsoft has shipped and all that. But this is the Surface Go for Microsoft. I, I'm optimistic that it is going to sell fairly well for Microsoft just because the Surface brand has become its own sort of thing. Microsoft has done a good job of positioning the product and the brand line as being a premium Apple-esque type competitor in the world, in a, in a crowded world of Windows-based machines. And so here it is, guys. I, I've been running this video on loop because nobody needs to see me, but this is the Surface Go. And uh, I'm curious what everybody thinks. And so if you have, uh, if you're planning to buy one, I would love to know your kind of thoughts, opinions about why you're buying one. And if it, if it doesn't have something you would want, I'd love to know that too. Now it does not have Thunderbolt 3, but again, at this price point and considering the, the larger Surface devices do not have a Thunderbolt 3 port, I'm not too surprised by that. I think LTE will be a really interesting option for this. Hopefully it doesn't add too much of a premium to it. Typically it's around 100 to 150 bucks premium and that kind of takes it out of that um, delicious sub 500 price point for the LTE options. But I, I don't know guys, I, I think this is a good one. I, I, I do worry that 399 is a little bit high of a price, but over time that will come down. And if you've been holding out on a Surface 3 and been waiting for Surface 4, this is it. This is the Surface Go from Microsoft. Um, thanks for tuning in. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll do a follow-up video answering everything you guys want to know. Thanks for tuning in.